Hello guys, it's Adam here, and today we are going to be looking at Stranger Things 3, the game. A game on Nintendo Switch that I just recently purchased. Okay, so before I get into all the specific points, I just want to say that overall, it kind of reminds me of what Undertale wanted to be in terms of gameplay. The story and characters are obviously where we're bland, but if you've watched the show, you definitely understand them more, which this game, you need to have watched the previous seasons, and this season is nice, it makes it easier to understand, but you need to have watched the previous ones. Like, need to. It doesn't give you any backstory for anyone, so make sure you do that. It takes the puzzle aspect of Undertale and really expands on it which is really the only part it does better than Undertale. And it does make some truly difficult puzzles, unlike Undertale's very easy puzzles. The art style is also very similar, and as for the overworld, it looks very nice, I gotta be honest. Cars, for some reason, I overall just think look the best out of everything. I don't know why, but I think that they do. Uh, the only part that isn't really good about the art design is most of the character designs, but we'll get to that later. So starting off uh, with the characters, there is a pretty good selection, but probably my biggest complaint for the entire game is why isn't Robin playable? And why the heck is Erica playable instead? Like, who wouldn't want to play as Robin and would want to play as Erica instead? I think it was a really dumb choice, and they sh definitely should have done Robin. Anyway, each character has a unique basic attack and a special attack. Some characters even have special abilities, like Dustin being able to hack, or Joyce being able to break through locks. Most characters are unique, but it does seem like they kinda ran out of ideas for like half the characters. Uh, well, like, half of them have pretty much just basic punches and kicks. Well, good characters like Dustin, Lucas, or Eleven have attacks specific to their person. Like, I mean, come on. You couldn't give Jonathan the spiked bat or Max a skateboard? Some of the characters with unique weapons are kind of random. Like Mike having a baseball bat or Nancy having scissors, but actually, I think Nancy make, having scissors makes sense, because in the hospital, I'm pretty sure she uses them. I'm still not sure about Mike, though. But, I mean, they are better than just punches. As for character designs, uh, I think most are, like, pretty, eh, kind of iffy. But certain ones, like Max, are really bad. Sorry, but I really don't like that one. Nancy's, uh, Robin is a close second, is definitely the best in my opinion. And that's probably why I find myself playing her most often. Uh, as for gameplay, it's relatively basic. Like I said, there's only two attacks, and one is limited by energy. It's not particularly hard, but I will say that there is a few difficult enemies. Overall, I think there's about 12 main bosses. I've only fought one, but I'm pretty sure I read somewhere there's like 12 or something. Uh, and, well, the one I did fight was disappointingly easy, but that's also probably because it was the first boss. I do like the good balance between fighting and puzzles, along with the basics. There's also a whole crafting system, which requires you to find items and collectibles. There's also 50 gnome collectibles hidden around Hawkins, because why not? This is also interesting, but it's not really neat either. Just kind of mini little puzzles to do all over the place. Apart from your two attacks, there's also something called blocking, which adds slightly more skill to the fighting system. But honestly, isn't that rewarding to complete successfully, as it only does a bit more extra damage. So the story is very hard to follow in this game if you haven't already watched the show, like what I was saying earlier. It follows in the same order, having each episode serve as a list of main quests, 
Well, you also have to have the option to complete many side quests along the way. My get biggest complaint, well, no, my second biggest, biggest complaint is probably that the cutscenes, if you could even call them that, are so bad and boring, it's honestly painful. You literally watch the characters stand there in their idle animations as text floats above or below their heads. I've only seen one cutscene that has added a new animation for one character, which was Billy, if you're wondering. The main quests are on obviously the highlight, and honestly the side quests mostly just seem like a pain in the butt. Someone just asks you to go get them from this and that from a store, and then all you have to do is go there, buy it, go all the way back, and you're done. I mean, if that's your jam, have fun, but I find it kind of boring. As for the soundtrack, it's really nothing special. One main song plays throughout most of the game, and it's not bad, just kind of basic, but I will say it sure does sound like something out of Stranger Things. In terms of replayability, I was hoping it would be pretty good since the game was $25, and it was once again only okay. There's three different modes you can play it in, easy, normal, and hard. I'm starting with normal, and I might do a hard playthrough, but probably just the main story, not the side quests. Anyways, before we end this video, I would like to say that I think the style of this game captures what it was going for very well. Honestly, this will probably be an entire other video, but to say the least, there should be tons more movie or show-based games that are just like this. In the end, I would say that this game is a little bit overpriced for what you're getting, which is about 15 hours for the main story, I think, and plus quite a few more with side quests and gnomes if you don't just search them up. So I would definitely recommend waiting on for, for it to go on sale, like I did with Hyrule Warriors, which got me a whopping $30 off. Only get this game if you really, well not really, if you like the show, and you like the style of this game. And please, if anyone is watching this who can do anything about this, please just make Robin playable. I really would like that. But, anyways, thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe and like if you joined, enjoyed the video. Comment your opinion on the game or who you would like to see playable. I will see you guys in one of my next videos. See you guys later. Bye. <sighs> now all we need is a Roger Rabbit and Jurassic Park game like this. I'll be satisfied.